So, some electronics exploded again. At least that's how it looks. Anyway, I've got a couple of new Raspberry Pis. Well, this was this USB hub project we played with some time ago. Uh, what I'm actually doing, <coughs> when I clear my throat, is I have a little flip-up uh, LCD monitor that takes analog video. Let's see if I can build one of these in here, along with a USB hub and uh, the accompanying card reader that went with it. Um, we'll see what we can do with that too. But uh, let's also have a quick little look at this hub module. You notice there's three ports on there. This actually connected by means of some little wires here. And I thought that that might be a four port USB hub. So if we turn this on here, see we have a HS8836, which is a four port USB hub chip. And I found that there are pinouts online. So that's actually handy. That's helped me determine which pins off that chip should go to a micro B lead, which is going to help me connect it to the Raspberry Pi Zero W. So um, I've got a little bit more work to do. I'm not going to do the usual video with this and detail all my little minor bits and pieces. I'm pretty much just going to jump to the finished product. So I'm a little bit on the crook side and I'd like some time that, to just relax. I'm just taking a quick step here, I thought I'd document. Um, firstly, I'm tapping off the power cables off here um, so I can supply some extra power to this hub instead of relying totally on the micro B port. The other thing too is I've removed a 5 volt regulator out of a car charger that I got uh, quite cheaply. As a friend of mine uh, runs an iPhone repair store called Mix iPhone Repairs. I'll put a link to that in the description. If you're interested in getting your screens replaced. Uh, he was kind enough to donate a couple of these to me as their old stock. Well I was just checking voltages before I soldered the wires up and test powered everything. This little capacitor shot off and tried to remove my eye. Now you might notice over here I keep my old pairs of glasses up here because I wear them when I'm working on electronics. This is why. But it is kind of interesting, we can see the, the internal fabric and the insulators and the electrolyte, or what would have been holding electrolytes in the electrolytic capacitor. Interesting, but I'm uh, going to have to start from scratch with the regulator. I should probably note that this isn't one of the ones I had donated. The one I had donated uh, doesn't fit in the case. So I think I'm going to go back, start from scratch and do some more mods. So uh, after that little blow up, I've decided to go back to the drawing board. I've gone back to one of the ones that Mick donated to me. And uh, I found that this little board on the end that was causing all the trouble in size wise is really just, if you look at it very closely here, there's a resistor and an LED and a capacitor. That's it. That's literally all that's on the board. So I've tapped off the connections here and we'll see what happens. But this overall is a much smaller compact unit now. I wonder if I'll fit it in the back of that case. So concerningly I think that that resistor and that little capacitor might have been dropping the voltage slightly. I'm getting around about 6 volts out of this. It's probably a smidgen too high. I wonder if that'll come down when I put some load on it. Well sadly that's the end of my USB hub. Not sure if you can see through this magnifier here, but I just blew a hole in the chip. That little bubble shouldn't be there. And I know it's some really messy cabling on the back here, and it's some very difficult to work with wire. But uh, I'm thinking something is not right. You can see here clearly where I've marked the board to positive. I did check everything carefully, but uh, either 6 volts was too much for it, or the polarity is wrong. I'm not sure which at this stage, but uh, I'm going to do some homework. But uh, I think this project is going to get shelved for a little bit. Well, uh, I think I found my problem. One of the components has gone dead short. So the output from this is 12.4 volts, which coincidentally is the same as the input. And uh, I believe that's the case that when I used my thrifty soldering iron, the UPS I have connected to the house battery has a common ground. 
which is why I keep it well out of the hands of my apprentice. But when I've touched a component on the board and I've left the hot wire connected, I believe it's created a short path through the ground on my soldering iron and cooked component. So I think I'm going to have to uh, rethink my design here a little bit. So um, defeat got the better of me and I thought I'd come back and I noticed there was a whole bunch of three-legged chips in my collection. And these guys are 79 series, except these appear to be 7910s, which they are 10 volt regulators. However, I did find an ancient pack from my local JCAR store. They are 7905s, they're 5 volt regulators. And they're usually good for about one and a half amp with a bit of heat sink, and usually about half amp without it. Which I think a half amp at five volts should almost be enough to run a Raspberry Pi Zero. We'll see. Now, before I go too much further, somebody the other day asked me why I have such a cheap multimeter. Well, this is a cheaper that floats around my desk for just for doing this stuff. I have a decent one, but I take it out in the field. Mostly because it's waterproof and water has claimed most of my electronics. In any case, you can see here what we're doing. We have 12 volts in, or 12.4. We have a 7805 linear regulator. And we down this little piece of Cat5, we're going back out to 12 volts. And you also see why I put some yellow tape over my foil stripping. But we have the most stable 5 volts I've had yet. It is not budging an inch. And I did a little bit more research as well and found out that the iPhone charger that I was using, or the iPod charger rather, does actually require 6 volts. And that's really interesting. So I would have been doomed before I started. But uh, as far as my USB hub, I think if I get far enough down the project, I'm going to dismantle this one that I've got in service. And I'll actually go and make it useful, probably for this project. I'll buy another one tomorrow. In any case, let's move on. And well, we can see from my test monitor here that the 7805 is indeed enough to run it. If you can deal with the absolute mess that is my work area right now, because my HDMI lead's a little short, I've had to run it over here. But we can see through here that we have the 7805 in line connected to 12 volts running direct off the GPIO port. Because there's no polyfuse to bypass in these things, it's not a lot different running straight off the GPIO. Right, oh, it's smoke test time. Gotta admit, I'm a little nervous here. But uh, I hope I've got everything right because this could be pretty catastrophic if I don't. But uh, I guess I have a spare board. I don't have a spare monitor, but this is not an essential project. You can see here I've got everything tested, test stuck down with a bit of blue tack. Now, let's see if we have life. Okay, so a bit of relief, I saw a green flash. And there's a bit of activity. Oh my god, it's actually working. It's actually working. Okay, I'm really, really happy. Really, really happy. Okay, now this actually means it's worth dismantling that USB hub for. All right, let's see how we go here. All right, so I've installed the hub unit. Time to see if we can type anything. See if I can run X server. Oh, we might have done something. I think I installed X server on this. I guess we'll find out in a moment. Oh, we have a cursor. Oh, and we have a graphical operating system. Okay, that is great. That is really, really good. Okay, let's pull the power for a moment. Okay, now what that means, if I flip this over, we can see the layout here, albeit things are a little bit out of shape. Let's just unplug our leads here and turn off our under desk lights. And that should live somewhere about there. I'm going to find a little bit of heat sink or something for that, because um, it does get kind of warm. But that proves the process, and I'm using Cat5 solid core conductors just because it's a little easier to navigate around a case like this but I think it's gonna work that is really good I haven't wasted two USB hubs for nothing all right time to get hot glue in yes hot glue you heard me right 
Right oh well I've got nine minutes to midnight and I'm about ready to put the cover back on. There's lots of hot glue everywhere and I've tucked the little regulator beside the tiny little air vent there. I'll return to this a little bit later and maybe put a piece of sheet metal in here for heat sinking. But for now and given the time of night it is, this is what's going to happen to it. Right here. Well I pulled some wibbly wobbly timey wimey stuff and uh, it's now the next day. And I went to my local J car and bought a couple of heat sinks and a bridge rectifier. Part of that is because I've had some troubles with reverse polarizing things, so using a bridge rectifier with DC means that we can polarity protect it. It doesn't matter which way we connect the polarity for the price of about a one volt drop, because there's two semiconductors, or in these all in one packages, it's usually 0.6 to 0.8 volts. Either way, not going to worry this unit, considering most of it's regulated back to 5 volts anyway. I also discovered that only one of these ports works. And on further research, I discovered that unless I use a USB OTG connector, the standard micro B lead that was designed for phones and charging that I've connected only connects to an upstream port. And only one output on that hub chip is designed as an upstream port. Unless I connect it in both directions. So I need a USB OTG connector. I'm not sure how I'm going to be able to build that into here, but we'll see how we go. Right, so this is where I'm at now. I've been and bought myself another one of these guys. That's number three now. I have a USB OTG adapter which came from Core Electronics with the case kit, which I'll show you later. And I've got a bunch of these guys I bought and they might be more compact, but I'm not sure how they're connected. So rather than directly connect this thing and wire it up to the port, how about we just try some adapters and see what works. Maybe that'll solve the fact that only one port works. Well, I tried both adapters. I tried the OTG adapter over there and the little mini thing that's hiding over here. I tried both of those and it didn't seem to make a difference. The only thing I did notice is that this port here is the port that works, whereas on the other ones, it's the central port. So I'm not sure why, but I think it could be down to a driver problem. It doesn't seem to be any kind of cable connection, and this is like an officially supplied one. So uh, I'll look for some more research on that matter. In the meantime, I've added this handy dandy bridge rectifier, which then means I can hook up the polarity any which way I want, provided I don't have a little short circuit here. I'll put a little bit more hot glue on there just to fill the whole thing up with hot glue. The other thing I also did is I took the 5 volt regulator, attached a heatsink and made it external. Again, I'll use some hot glue on there. This is not a production model, just for my own interest. So uh, we'll see how we go from there. I'll probably neaten up some of these cable routes too and just pull them away where they're going to cause interference. In any case, uh, let's see how we end up after this. Well, in my quest to get everything working, I did discover something. I found that the little chip in here that runs the USB hub, which is the HD8836 off the top of my head, which we have right up here, and there are full diagrams of this thing, I found some specs and some manuals. Now in this I discovered something really interesting. There is one main port that will accept anything, and the other remaining three ports will only accept specific types of devices. So I can use my keyboard in the middle and I can plug a memory stick into one side and it will work quite fine and mount. I've even played video directly off that. Now this brings me to another problem. I decided that I would try and connect up to a $20 set of Bluetooth speakers which worked quite well to start with in the GUI. Then when I went back to the standalone version, or version of Kodi if you're not familiar with it, that is uh, the old what has become of Xbox Media Center after Microsoft uh, had a go at them about the naming of that. In any case, um, I've broken Bluetooth. I can't get it to work at all. If I go to the screen here and move my finger, have a look at this tiny little screen. If I decide to go through my commands and go to Bluetooth control, it won't open Bluetooth, even though Bluetooth is loaded and running just fine. could have something to do with me removing the drivers. But that is a video all of its own for another day. 
at the moment this is working quite fine my little heatsink at the back here is working well and you'll probably notice it's running hot enough that it just starts to melt the blue to the hot blue but uh, for now it's not resetting so there's obviously enough cooling to keep that LM7805 working just fine and uh, I had this plugged into up to 14.4 volts today on the solar system and uh, nothing self-destructed I've also, if you'll notice here, my very crudely attached banana plugs, which we can focus on. This is flagged red for positive, but it's plugged into the negative, and vice versa with this one. So the bridge rectifier in here is clearly working. So I can haphazardly plug this into anything from about 10 to 14 and a half volts in any polarity, and we're not going to have a problem. And I think I can plug it into up to 28 volts and the inbuilt 7805 regulator is going to handle that just fine. Perhaps get a little hotter being a linear regulator. In any case, I hope you guys have enjoyed this. If you haven't, I don't know, I guess tell me either way. I'm getting used to this whole comment thing on YouTube. So you might, uh, you might be surprised and I'll take it with a grain of salt if you do post something negative. Anyway, I'll talk to you later, possibly in another video.